Minecraft 1.21 broke a lot of people's data packs, and a question that I frequently get is, you know, why? So I am making this video to hopefully clear that up. If you have a data pack that worked in a previous version and you are unsure of why it is no longer working, hopefully this video will help you sort that out. Now for the purposes of this video, I am assuming that your data pack worked in 1.20.6. I'm not going to be covering anything that changed up to and including 1.20.6. And also, I'm not going to be covering anything that was newly added in 1.21. This video is exclusively talking about things that were changed from previous versions that might have broken an existing data pack. And I'll be going over how to make the changes necessary to keep your data pack working the same as it did before, but in this new version. Okay, so with that all out of the way, let's jump into the first big change, and this one was huge. It's likely that this one will actually be able to completely solve the problems of like 80% of the people watching this video. And that change is folder names. So basically, every single one of these directory folders inside your data pack was made singular. So if it had an S on the end, the S has been removed. This is what all those folders used to look like back in 1.20.6, and in 1.21 they look like this. Now you can see that for most of them the S's on the end have been removed. Now you may also notice that tags is the same. Tags is the only one that kept its S. However, back in 1.20.6, if you go into tags, you'll have these folders underneath, which are also all ending in S, and in 1.21, those tag directories have also been made singular. So, for this change, to update your data pack to the newest version, all you gotta do is take these folders, if you had them, and just make them singular. Now, a big one to notice here is the function tag folder. Under tags, you'll notice that the function folder is singular. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that this applies to all namespaces, including the Minecraft namespace. So, oftentimes, if you're making a function data pack, you'll go into the Minecraft Minecraft namespace and add function tags called load and tick. Well, those are also under the function directory inside tags, and you need to make that directory singular as well. That's an easy one to miss when you're updating. And other than that, if you just change every single one of these directories and every single namespace you have, then you should be updated correctly. Now, like I said, that change is probably going to help most of the people watching this video completely solve their breaking problems. However, that wasn't the only change. The next big major one is attributes. Now, attributes actually got a pretty huge overhaul in this update. And in particular, attribute modifiers no longer have a UUID and name. Those fields have been completely replaced by just a singular namespaced ID. And don't worry, I am going to show you what I mean by that. I've gone ahead and made an example function that highlights all of the changes from this version. So what you're seeing now is a bunch of attribute commands, and this is how they would have looked back in 1.20.6. So when you're giving yourself a modifier, you add it with this UUID, and then you also have to give it a name, and then you can specify the actual value and the operation. And this is what that function now looks like once it's been updated to 1.21, and you can see most of this attribute command is the same, but instead of a UUID and name, there's now a namespaced ID right here. And this namespaced ID is actually how you will identify this particular modifier when you want to either remove it or get its value in the future. So in 1.20.6, you were calling its UUID to remove it or get its value, and the name here really was not used for much of anything before, and I think that's kind of why they made this change. Because now you just have the namespaced ID, and that is what's used to reference it in both remove and also value get. One other thing you might have also noticed when I was flipping back and forth is that the the names of these operations over here have also been changed. So before we had add, multiply base, and then just multiply. In the new version we have add value, add multiplied base, and add multiplied total. So if you're using the attribute command anywhere in your data pack, you will probably want to take a look at this tutorial I made and make your updates accordingly. And yes, by the way, I will attach these tutorial files down in the description if you want to go download those. Now that's not all that was changed with attributes. You may have actually seen me flipping back and forth between those functions and notice that there were some more commands toward the bottom, and the next one down here actually relates to entity attributes. So again, these are what the attribute commands for entities would look like back in 1.20.6. So if you wanted to summon an entity that had attributes on it, you would have an attributes list, and then each object in the list had a name and a base. In 1.21, that's just been refactored, so everything is now lowercase, attributes is now lowercase. Name has been changed to ID as well, that's the other big change, and then base is still base, but also lowercase. And I provided this second example down here to show that you can also summon an entity with modifiers. I don't really know of uh, many times that someone would want to do that, but in case you do, modifiers has also been changed. It was still capitalized before, and it had a UUID and a name, and then an amount and an operation, and the operation was an integer, either 0, 1, or 2. In 1.21, modifiers is lowercase, the UUID and name have been re just replaced with an ID, and then here you will put your namespaced ID, that's kind of the same thing we talked about up here. Amount is lowercase, operation is lowercase, 
case, an operation is also a string now. So rather than being 0, 1, or 2, it'll actually be one of these three values right here. So add value, add multiply base, or add multiply total. You just put that right there. And now finally, moving on from attributes, we do have a couple more changes to entity NBT. Now the first change is that for arrows, the shot from crossbow NBT field has been completely removed. So this is how it was on 1.20.6. You would be able to search for an arrow, and if it had shot from crossbow 1B, you could, you know, test for that and make it do something. In 1.21, it's a little bit different because arrows now store the data of the entire item that shot them in this new weapon field. So here we wanted to just test to see if the arrow had been shot from a crossbow, how you now do that in 1.21 is to search for the weapon field and see if it contains an item that has just ID crossbow. I like this change because now rather than just determining whether the arrow was shot from a crossbow, we can also determine properties of the item that shot it, and namely, the game uses this to determine enchantments. So if you were testing for shot from crossbow, well now you just need to test for this. And then lastly, in Entity MBT, we have a change to fireballs, and it applies to all types of fireballs as well as wither skulls. In 1.20.6, we had this interesting power field that was really glitchy, and it was really hard to make it do what you wanted to, and if you added it, the fireballs would usually end up looking kind of buggy, but basically how power used to work was it kind of acted as an acceleration for the motion field, right? So if I was going to summon a fireball that had some sort of motion, it doesn't matter what its motion was, these values were consistently added to the motion, right? So anything inside power, well, this would get added here, and this would get added here, and so on. Now in 1.21, they have completely changed this entire setup. Power has been completely removed, and it was replaced with this acceleration power. Now acceleration power is no longer a list, it's just a number. And I believe how acceleration power works is that it takes the existing motion and constantly adds speed in the same direction that the fireball is already traveling. So we've actually kind of lost some functionality here. Before, with the really glitchy power, you know, even though it was really glitchy, we could make it accelerate in a different direction from the motion, and we can no longer do that because acceleration power always acts along the same axis as the motion. But apparently it's less glitchy, so maybe there's a trade off there. Okay, and as far as functions go, that pretty much wraps it all up. We do have a couple more changes to cover, and these are significantly more obscure. First of all, the Minecraft Music Discs item tag has been completely removed. The game no longer checks for it because it now checks for the jukebox playable item component. So if for some reason in your data pack you were referencing the Music Discs tag, well, you can no longer do that. You can either create your own Music Discs tag or start checking for the jukebox playable component yourself. Okay, so that was a really simple change. The next change is not quite so simple, and it has to do with predicates. First off, for entity predicates, that being entity properties and also entity scores, if you were specifying entity killer, direct killer, or killer player, those have all been renamed. They are now attacker, direct attacker, and attacking player, respectively. And then the rest of the predicate changes have to do with the fact that enchantments are no longer hard-coded. So the random chance with looting predicate has been completely removed, and it was replaced with this predicate called random chance with enchanted bonus. Now between this one and this one, I've kind of made a mock-up of how you would upgrade that predicate to achieve exactly the same effect that it was before. So you can pause the video and look between these two if you want to, if you want to try to see the differences, because I am going to move on. The final change for predicates was that item predicates, such as those under match tool or like equipment predicates and stuff like that, if you're testing for an enchantment on your item, well the field is no longer enchantment, it's now enchantments with an S. That's all they changed. And there is some additional functionality there, but again, all I'm doing is helping you get your previous data pack up to speed so that it still works in the newest version. If all you do is change enchantment to enchantments, it should work perfectly. And finally, there is one more major change, and it has to do with item modifiers. Now this can be item modifiers inside loot tables, but I've gone ahead and just defined it as an item modifier under the item modifier directory, just as an example. So first off, again, has to do with the fact that enchantments are no longer hard-coded, looting enchant has been removed, and it's been replaced with this function called enchanted count increase, where in this case the only thing that's different is that now you have to specify which enchantment it works with. So looting enchant was hard-coded to only work with looting. The new modifier is exactly the same, but you can just switch which enchantment you use. Next up we've got enchant randomly, which is almost the same, but enchantments has just been renamed to options. And again, it has some new functionality, but the old syntax that you used with enchantments before still does work. And then lastly, we have copy name. So again, it's renaming these fields killer and killer player, but this time they've been renamed to attacking entity and last damage player 
which is not at all the same as what they changed it to inside predicates. Why they would do this, I have no clue, but that's what they did, so that's what you're gonna have to do. All right, and that is every data pack change that could have potentially broken your 1.20.6 data pack. Now again, I was assuming that you started with this working in 1.20.6 and you just wanted to upgrade to 1.21, and for the future, I'm kind of hoping to turn this into a series of videos. So for example, when 1.21.1 comes out, if there are some major data pack changes, I'll make another one of these videos but assuming that you were working in 1.21.0. So that way, if you wanted to go from any version to any other version, well, you could just start at one version and then watch every video up to and including the one you want to upgrade to. I don't think I'll be making any videos about earlier versions, but hopefully this will turn into a series in the future. So if you want to see more of that, stick around. I would love to have you. And I hope this video did manage to clear up your problems with your datapack programming. If you'd like to talk some more, you're always welcome to join the Discord or leave a comment down below. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Conyer. I will see you all later, my dudes.